Um, let's start on Greece. We'll obviously talk about Brexit. Let's start on Greece. Is it better in or out of the euro now, do you think? Should it have come out last year? We should never have gotten in. OK, no, we agree on that. <laughs> right. But once you're in, yep. getting out is not going to take you to where you would have been had you not entered. Right. Uh, to be very succinct, uh, just because you don't have a currency to devalue, it's not as if you have your own currency and you have a peg which you can sever overnight. You have to create it. So it's equivalent of announcing a devaluation 10 months, 12 months before it happens. You can imagine mm -hmm. what kind of pain that... So it's a trap. Once you're in, you better try to make it work. Right. So really the government's had no choice at all because it's not been in a position to say no to the bailout money. Oh, and it no, hasn't that, that is not, that's not quite right. Uh, my policy, for instance, when I was in the ministry, was uh, a campaign of disobedience to the Troika, to the lenders. Mm -hmm. I was simply saying something that I think anyone would, should have said, that is, I'm not going to take another penny of your money until and unless I can guarantee that I will, there's a strong possibility that I can repay it. That doesn't mean that you're getting out. What you're saying is that if you, we don't come to a rational, honourable agreement, uh, we're going to default within the Eurozone. Mm. And then your banks would have gone bust and there would have been all hell to pay, isn't that? But the, you the, see, the, the, the third day I was in the ministry, uh, the president of the Eurogroup threatened me that until and unless we sign up to the previous failed fiscal policy that we were elected to challenge, our banks would be closed anyway. So, uh, you know, David Cameron has to make up his mind. You, saw, <laughs> you, you, you showed us this clip before. Is it true, and I believe it is, that the Eurozone has used authoritarianism in order to keep Greece in a debt prison? Or is it true that I destroyed the Greek right. economy? He has to, to make right. his mind right. up about this. Are you on the side of the protesters today? There have been protesters in the last couple of days. Obviously, the protests go on as the austerity goes on. Are you on the side? Would you be there in the streets if you were there? Oh, yes, I'm a Protestant when it comes to, uh, to, to, to irrationality. You see, what's happening now is an assault on logic. And whenever logic is assaulted, you end up with people suffering. Right. Now, the, the truth is, though, that they are willing. What Greece wants is debt relief. That's what you've always argued, a write-off of some of the debts to get it into a sustainable position. They have actually started talking about it today for the first time, because who wants it as well as Greece? The IMF want debt well, relief. Isn't it interesting that if you read the letter that the managing director of the IMF, Ms. Christine Lagarde, sent to all finance ministers only a few days ago, what she was actually saying was precisely what I was yeah. saying for five months. Right. Yeah? But, uh, but let, me, let, let me answer your question directly go, go on. saying this. They're doing it their own way around. They're putting the, ha the car before the horse. The reason why one needs, when in a debt deflationary spiral, debt relief, is in order to have a lower primary surplus target so as not to deter investors who hear you know, those high, terribly high primary surplus targets and they think, oh, they're going to, to, to tax us, uh, to smithereens, and they don't invest. So the reason why you need debt relief is so that you can have a 1%, 1.5% primary surplus target at most to attract investment, to have the growth that allows you to recover and repay your debts. What they are doing now is they're imposing three and an exorbitant 3.5% yeah, no, and, and then saying that we'll discuss the, what's the point of debt relief if we are destroyed by austerity well, at 3.5% There's, a, half percent there's, a, long, there's a long discussion to be had about whether they want to see some action and some reform and some privatisation and some liberalisation before they yield the but one bargaining tool they have. They've seen all Well, that. I think they feel they've never really had it No, properly. no, 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 this yeah. is not what is going on. What is really going on? There is a titanic battle between, on the one hand, the IMF, and Berlin, I mean, there is that. and at the same time there is Paris versus Berlin. So Greece is a little mouse that is being squashed while the elephants are tussling, trying to work out their differences. Mm. Right, we need to talk about Brexit, because you've said you think Britain should stay in. Yes, I do. Do you think... If in this awful European Union. It's so, so it's, it's kind of least bad option. I mean, the key thing is, if you're on the left, as you are, mm -hmm. isn't this thing a capitalist club? Look, we live in a capitalist world. Pretending that there is an alternative to capitalism tomorrow uh, is not to be leftist, it is to be inane. What we're facing now is this. We're facing a debt deflationary crisis in a very large part of, of Europe. Most of Europe now is in negative interest rate territory. Britain, thankfully, is not in the euro, so you're not in the same kind of mire that the rest of Europe is, but you're not out of the woods. 
And a Brexit, in my estimation, is going to do two things. Firstly, it's going to fail to restore your sovereignty to the House of Commons, while at the same time... Why will it, sorry, why will it fail? That's an important one. Why will that fail? But let me just add okay, the okay. second part, then I'll come yeah. back to the first one. And secondly, it's going to speed up the process of disintegration of Europe, because there's no doubt that Brexit was going to start a chain reaction of either formal or informal okay. detachments and the result will be a deflationary vortex from which the British economy will not survive. Now, why will you not be able to recover your sovereignty? Very simple, because you're part of the single market. You already have intertwined... Well, saying, get out of the single market. In fact, that's well, the, Michael that, Gove the latest thing. Michael that. Gove says, just get Ma out of the Michael thing. Gove, and I think to his credit, because there is a logical coherence there in what he's saying, but try to get out of the single market. Now, that, the, the process of disentangling Britain from the single market is going to be an extremely laborious painful and destructive process. So I'm glad that Michael Gove is being logically coherent, but then do you really believe that the Tory government under Boris Johnson would do this? It's very hard for me to see that happening.